Hey class, this is the notes for lesson 5.7, System of Linear Inequalities. We're going to be covering how do we do systems of linear inequalities today, which include checking solutions, graphing, and then writing them as well. So, our notes that you guys should add in today is on a system of linear inequalities, a set of two or more linear inequalities in the same with the same variables. An example is like this. Notice how they are both have x and y, but they do have different y-intercepts, different slopes, and different inequality symbols. They don't necessarily have to be in slope-intercept form, but it is easiest when they are. The solution is any ordered pair in the shaded region for both of them. We'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So one thing to check first is like if you want to see if a point works for both of them algebraically. If you had a graph, you would be able to look on the graph and see does the point double shaded. If not, you can use algebra. So for this first one, we are plugging in these values. So we already plugged in 3 for x and 5 for y, because that's where we get our two values from. As we finish out with this first one, we would get 5 is less than 6, which does work. Or for the second one, we get 5 is greater than or equal to 3 plus 1, so this means 5 is greater than or equal to 4. This does not work, so this is not a solution. So on the right, remember that x values come first, y values come second in the points. So here we have to plug in 0 is less than 2 times negative 2. And here we'd plug in 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2 plus 1. As I was reviewing my work, I realized over here I said 5 is greater than or equal to 4, and this is not true. Obviously, this is true. So for the first one, this point is a solution. As we work on the second one, you will quickly realize that the second one is not a solution point. Because 0 is less than negative 4, therefore this is not true. Right away you know that this one is not going to be a solution. Once one of them fails, they both fail. Alright, so some class notes that you guys should have written down. Um, when you're graphing systems of linear equations, you won't need to graph to show all the solutions. So you want to graph both inequality lines Sometimes, remember, if it has a solid line underneath, it's going to be a solid line. If it does not have a solid line underneath, it's going to be a dashed line. You want to shade appropriately, so you might be shading above one line in one color and below another line in another color. The region that has both colors being shaded is the region where the solution points are. So, for example, in this little example, 0, 0 would be a solution, negative 1, 0 would be a solution, and negative 2, negative 1 would be a solution. However, 2, 2, right at this point over here, would not be a solution, and 1, 5 would not be a solution because it does not exist where both of them are shaded. So let's see what this looks like. We want to graph both of these. It's helpful to use different colors. So I'm going to use red for my first color here. Y is less than or equal to 3. So I'm going to make a solid line at 3, and it's shaded below it. When you're shading, try to use a highlighter if possible so it's easier to see rather than lots and lots of squiggling. If you are using Desmos, it will automatically do this for you. And I encourage you to use Desmos as you have to graph these types of problems so you can make sure you're doing it correctly. Alright, our other one. Y is greater than X plus 2, meaning we'd start at 2. I'm going to go up one over one every time. Like always, make the dots first, so then you can just connect the dots. And this one is a dashed line because it does not have a greater than or equal to that goes with it. It says above, so you need to shade above this line. So 
So that is how you graph it. Some points that would work for points. So possible solutions would be any of these points inside the double shaded region. So we could have negative 2, 2. could have negative 5, 0. And we also could have negative 6, negative 2. All of these are possible solutions for this graph. Sometimes you will graph a system of linear inequalities and you'll get two parallel lines. And sometimes those lines will be shaded opposite. If they are shaded opposite, like this, so there's a white space in between, then there are no solutions. However, if you have a similar graph, and they are shaded um, above and below, so there is no white area. Instead, it looks like this. So the blue line is above. This red line would be below. This would be a parallel line set that does have answers because it would have answers in the middle here. So again, it's only no solution if there is a region that has nothing covered after you do your graphing. All right, now we're going to go kind of the other direction with this. We want to look at a finished system of linear inequalities and identify what are the two inequalities used. We'll always want to use y equals plus mx plus b format because that'll make it easier as we work through these. Starting with our flat line on the bottom there, it crosses the y-axis at negative 2, so this is going to be y is greater than or equal to negative 2. For our diagonal line, it crosses at 0, and it goes over 1, up 1 every time, so it's going to be y is less than x, because it's less than because it's a dashed line, and it's less than because it's shaded below. Here's another example. Our vertical line crosses the x-axis at 3, so we have x and 3 are anchors. It's a solid line, so it has to be or equal to, and it's less than that solid line, so it's less than or equal to. Our dashed line here starts at negative 1. Our slope is over 3, up 2. So we have 2 over 3, as it's rise over run, x, and it's greater than. So we have y is greater than 2 thirds x minus 1. A written out example, uh, this is a pretty complicated example because it does have three aspects to it. You may see some of these problems, don't worry if you do, let's just talk through it. So it says you have at most eight hours to spend at the mall and at the beach. So x and y are hours at the mall and hours at the beach. The most you can spend is eight. When you graph that first line, it becomes this diagonal line. It also tells you you want to spend two hours at the mall and four hours at the beach. Therefore, you'd have your x values of mall time is greater than or equal to two, which is shown here, so it's shaded above this. And your beach time is, wants to be greater than four. So it would be here, so it's shaded above. So this little region on the inside, these are all the values that you could work. Now, some of the answers might have decimals because if you're thinking about hours, you could have half of an hour. So that's why 2.5 makes sense in this case. Good luck on your homework today. It's already on big ideas for you.